Hello and welcome to coverage of the Super Sunday Series Championship. We're in Renton, Washington at Wizards of the Coast headquarters and it's time for the finals. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with Randy Bueller and we are underway. Oscar Christensen from Denmark is on your left. He is playing Red Green Monsters against Luis Salvato with Red White Agro. Luis comes from Argentina. And a nice start here oh, for yeah. Oscar Christensen. He gets to go turn one Elvish Mystic, turn two Rattlefall and a Scryland. Like on the play, turn one Elvish Mystic. He's ahead. He's way yes. ahead. I mean, his deck is naturally a little bit slower than Luis Salvato's, but on the play with a turn one Mystic, it's not slower anymore. No, it's, it's evened up. And it looks like Oscar's going to ship that card to the bottom and pass the turn back to Luis Salvato. I don't know that I was expecting a Naya-flavored finals here. It's like white and green are duking it out to see who pairs better with red. Yep, and Chain of the Rocks is actually going to take care of Rattleclaw Mystic right off the bat. Not a great turn two play from Luis. I mean, he had to do something, but... Not a great turn three for Oscar if it starts with attack with my Elvish Mystic. Now, he could have a Boon Seder in hand here and still develop his board out. If he doesn't, yeah, yeah I'm kind of with you. That, that was not a great turn. So let's see what he's got. Could also have left up Lightning Strike to kill Rattlemaster, maybe. No. But yeah, the problem with that is always Hordling Outburst. You do not want to have Burn Spells left up against Hordling Outburst. Okay, Boon Seder. Boon Seder it Develops is. Develops his board, but I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't pair up well against Hordling Outburst. It's actually quite terrible there. Now, Oscar can have five mana this turn, including double red. We could just start seeing dragons come flying in here. You know, once he starts casting a Parade of Storm Breaths, ugh, there's sure. one right there. This is where the race gets swung firmly in Oscar's favor, as he can get to cards like Storm Breath, where Luis Salvato can't. White does not give you mana acceleration. All right. The Rabble Master... Chain your Boon Seder. You're not even picking off one of my Goblin Tokens with that 4-2. Pretty nice tempo play That's for Salvato. That's a nice play too, yeah. So How does this race work out though? I, you know, I, mean, I don't Storm know. Breath wins this race if Oscar can kill Rabble Master? Yes, that's correct. Oscar's got Crater's Claws. He's got Lightning Strike. Uh, Chandra doesn't really help. It's basically those cards. Okay, so Storm Breath battles in there. Dropping Luis Salvato down to nine. And it is Chandra. He's going to ping a goblin and, and ship it back. So, you know, all of a sudden there's a lot of pressure on this Elvish Mystic to get one chump lock in at some <laughs> point here on this, uh, on this uh, goblin rabble master. There's six mana for Oscar. So if he doesn't chump block and has a land then Storm Breath is lethal, right? He can monstrous the Storm Breath Dragon. He can win the game next turn. That's true. I don't know if that's how he's playing it. Oh, oh he's he got has the lightning, a lightning strike. strike this turn, too. There you go. Wow, just completely emptied his whole hand there. Yep, Chandra plus Lightning Strike. Picks off a Goblin and the Rabble Master. Now he's bought himself enough time to attack with Storm Breath twice. Yes. Also, land off the top is still lethal. Yeah. I don't think Luis can get all the cards out of his hand. Can no you know, plus Chandra can ping for one if she Chandra needs can to. ping for one too, yeah. The, the Storm Breath Dragon, seven power on its own. Now, Luis Salvato does have an answer for Storm Breath in his deck. He's got Stoke the Flames. He'd have to fire it off immediately for fear of Oscar drawing a land. And, you know, I don't think he's got one in his hand. Chain of the Rocks does not get it done. This is where you really see the tempo advantage from an Elvish Mystic, right? Salvato's got four cards left in his hand. Oscar has dumped all of them. He's down to zero cards in hand. Yes. And it's basically, he was on the play, so okay, fine, he's down a card and goes first. Um, but that Mystic... And he's just dead, right? Four... Oh, no, it's not quite enough. He still needs to hit yeah, a land. Yeah, he needs a land. He's dead to a land. Does Oscar find it? He hasn't played it yet. Yeah, I mean, I would think he's done the math. If he had a land, he'd be... 
<laughs> oh, he hit one. <laughs> Chandra. Crack yeah. this, and I think we're going to see. Although he had to use Chandra, so this only did. Oh. It's still enough, because uh, Luis has three cards in hand. Ah, of course. Crazy. Had two shots at a land and got there on the second one. Had to be land that comes into play untapped. Yep. It was. Ball game. And Oscar Christensen picks up the first game in impressive wow. fashion. That was quick. Yeah, if that deck could play six Elvish Mystics, eight Elvish Mystics, yes. we'd see it winning a lot more tournaments. It would, yeah. And the key, of course, being that Elvish Mystic coming down on turn one, it does yeah. attempt to fill that slot by playing other mana creatures, but that one They're drop. All, they all cost two, yeah. So important. These decks are actually pretty similar in terms of the red cards they play. Right? They both have Ash Cloud Phoenix. They both have four Storm Breath Dragons. They both have two Chandras. They both have uh, three Lightning Strikes, precisely. Now, Salvato is more red. He's got Hordling Outburst and Stoke the Flames, whereas uh, Oscar's got a fair number of green cards. They both play four Rabble Masters. Pretty similar. They both sideboard Sarkin. Interesting. I wonder what happens here after sideboarding. Oscar's got, I mean, the Back to Nature's are obviously not relevant. The Sarkins, two Xenagos and a Chandra. Faded Conflagration. Wild Slash, is that good here? Yeah, Wild Slash is great, right? It kills the uh, it doesn't kill, Rabble kill. Master and kills Seekers. Yeah, you probably do want it. You know what you really want, though? What's that? Barrage of Boulders. Oh, yeah? It's two copies oh, of yeah, Barrage it's two of, of Boulders. Clear kill away all your tokens. tokens. That's pretty nice. And maybe you can't block. Yeah. Huh. And, and usually, I mean, his deck is very good at getting Ferocious Enabled. That's interesting. Yeah. Luis, on the other hand, he has a couple of outpost sieges in his sideboard. Does that do anything here? I would not play that. Yeah. That's too slow. Like, you tap, you tap out your turn at any point against Oscar's deck to play outpost siege, <laughs> which does just nothing the turn you play it most of the time, and he just goes, here's a dragon. I just don't think you have the time to fuss around with that. I tend to play that more in a grindy matchup. Yeah, he's got Hush Wings, which don't seem like they turn off enough things. He's got Glare of Heresy that's obviously not relevant. The races are not relevant. There's not much in Luis Salvato's sideboard. I'm not sure his deck is all that bad, though. I think his deck is advantaged in the main. I don't know. It's a cool matchup. Good to see. I like these type of matchups. This is kind of slugfest, you yeah, know. Blood makes the grass grow. <laughs> I've never heard that. It's an Eric Lauer phrase. <laughs> That's a great one. How is that not flavor text yet? <laughs> these players, of course, are playing for a lot of money here. $6,000. Like, it's been a really fun weekend for the players. We've been hanging out with them at dinner, doing some drafts, and they're all having a great time. But it's business time right now. Oh, yeah. There's a big pay jump here, $3,000 difference between first and second place, but both players can breathe a little bit of relief here and say, well, I'm locking up 3K just for where I'm at now, which is real nice, and then uh, and try to go for the, for the trophy and for the 6,000. Our top eight competitors all got at least 1,000, and if you made it to the semifinals, you got 1,500 bucks. We paid $500 down to 16th, and then everybody got a booster display. That's a box. <laughs> To, sometimes you have to translate the in-the-building <laughs> stuff, you know. It's a, you got a you box. Up into the display formation for your <laughs> Is that why? No. Rashad wants to know if they put it in a little dis... You know, because there's a display, right? Like sure. The, each box has a little perforated part so that you can set it up in a store and see what packs are behind it. And Rashad wants to know if, you, if they present it to them that way. And the answer is no, they don't. Seal, sealed booster display, so... You can actually take a look at the background there. Those are the players and some employees as well. <laughs> also, to the surprise of absolutely no one, Tim Ayton is watching a draft. Not playing in a oh, draft. Oh, yeah, I see him right there. He's birding. That's what he lives for. Funny. That's Calvin Kim right there. He was playing in the event. If you look to oh, the far right. I think I see right. Melissa de Torres in the back, too. She's the newest addition to R&D. Yeah, she is. Her internship started last week, week before. Uh, it started, yeah, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, something like that. See uh, Matt Costa there, too. He made it to the top eight, but ultimately lost in the quarterfinals. I see Park Jun Young over there. 
Grand Prix winner, battling in a side draft, and even an Adrian Sullivan. Sure. Yeah, he almost clawed his way back from a slow start into the top 16. Came up just a couple spots short. Mm -hmm. Oscar Christensen, interesting story on how he got here. He, he made it to the finals of one of these qualifiers. And of course, the way you get to this point is you have to win a Super Sunday Series Invitational. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me, uh, qualifier. And that, those happen on day two of a GP, right. And Oscar actually made it all the way to the finals of one, only to find himself seated against Yoel Larson, of all people. Okay. Yoel beat him and sent Oscar yeah. home. And then Oscar won a different one? He actually just won the next one. Oh, <laughs> like, my God. Literally the next GP, he just went, played, didn't day two the GP, <laughs> played Super Sunday again, and won it. So Wow. That doesn't happen very often where you're like, oh, I'll just get that. I'll get them next time. And then you actually do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not easy to win, but they're no, certainly they're, worth you know, it. Several hundreds of players in them. Typically, yeah, there's right? two, three hundred. They can be in these things. They are tough. Yeah. The cool part about them, though, is that you can pick which format you want. Most of them are a sealed part and then also uh, a standard part. And you get to pick which one you want to be in. If you okay. make the top four of your half, then you can make it to the top eight where you do... Well, the only real way to play Magic, a booster <laughs> draft. And then uh, the winner of that wins their seat. And with that, they get flown out here yeah. to Renton in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. They get to get a tour. They get put up in a hotel. They get some dinner out of the deal. You know, meals are paid for. And they get to participate in this really fun weekend-long tournament, Super Sunday Series Championship. So... Keep that in mind next time you go to a Grand Prix. They are uh, a really sweet follow-up tournament if things don't go well for you in, uh, in day one of the GP. All right, looks like we're just about ready for game two here. Oscar Christensen kind of thumped Luis there in the first game. Yeah. Luis is going to mulligan Ooh. here. He's on the play. Which is right where he wants to be with his red, right, aggressive deck. But mm -hmm. this is this, this part, not so much. Question number two, does Oscar Christensen have the Elvish Mystic? Th that is a huge, honestly, like the, the turn one Mystic is such a difference maker in this deck. Like you said, you know, we had a point there where both players had been playing cards every turn. <laughs> it's just one of them was empty handed after right. starting from seven and the other one was, had three or four cards left. Four, yeah. And there was... An Elvish Mystic kind of waving at us, like, I did all that. <laughs> that was me. Thanks a lot. So Argentinian Luis Silvato is going to go down to six cards here, trying to rally back and even things up against Oscar from Denmark. Denmark making a splash. Oh, yeah. It could be the year of the Danes, right? Could be. World Magic Cup champions? Could be. That was last year. Oh, I guess the World Magic Cup was last year. Does that not count? Was that last year? It was like a month ago, but yes. <laughs> Six weeks, maybe? Well, it's still the same season, right? Yeah, I mean, time is actually measured in blocks, right? Right. It happened after Cons of Tarkir yeah. came out, so it's clearly yeah. this year. Yeah, Rashad, I'm not using your antiquated calendar. All right, we've got to keep here from... Luis Salvato, he's got Temple of Triumph to kick things off. So it looks like he's going to be able to work through any mana issues. He's really tanked out there. If you need a land and it's a land, you put it on top. <laughs> right. If you need a land and it's not, you put it on the bottom. So we know he's got lands. No Elvish Mystic. Right. Not even a forest. He is representing Wild Slash, I guess which we think probably came in. Seems like it should have come in. Which one? Wild Slash. Wild Slash, yeah, for sure. But I mean, that's why you lead with Mountain on turn one. But no Seekers to kill. Now what? You get the awkward spot of, I want to play my two drop, but I also want to kill your Rabble Master. The fact that he's a cracking a fetch land, sure. Would lead you to believe we're going to see an air or a uh, rattle claw. Yeah. All right, air of the wilds, perfectly fine start here. Luis 
quickly untapped. And what's his turn three play? He's got a, hmm. you know, he's got a lot Just of great plays on three, but he can only find a seeker of the way. Not bad, but I mean, in a deck with Brimaz. Yeah, it's no Rabble Master. Rabble Master, it's a little disappointing. And Air of the Wilds offers a trade up. Denied. <laughs> Salvato's going to take the two damage here. And apparently, no. No Boom Saders this time. It's interesting. Do you burn this Seeker main phase while there's no tricks possible? No. He's going to play a morph. What could it be? What could it ever be? I mean, he is running Ash Cloud. Yeah, right? no, it, it's actually two choices. Okay. Okay, Seeker attacks. No prowess triggers so far, but. Okay, there you go. So this is after blocks. After no blocks. After no blocks, yeah, right? He's going to take down the. Did we uh, see which it was? Mystic. Yeah, it looks it's like a Mystic. Mystic, yeah. So. That means that he also gets a trigger from the Seeker of the Way. And this is where, you know, trying to race the Seeker of the Way doesn't really turn out great. Right. And okay. so you kill it. Down goes Seeker. Yeah, you need to kill Seeker, for sure. You do. It's a little annoying because Luis Savato has so many other great threats that you don't want to have to kill. Ooh, that was a nice draw. You don't want to have to kill his two drop, but Seeker just demands that kind of respect. Ooh, an attack from Air of the Wilds here. Ha. <laughs> Backup plan. Now he's taking a little bit of risk by attacking here. If that one were to die, he would get hit pretty hard. Oh. He's going to offer the trade. Does that signal to you that Luis might have another Brimaz in hand? Maybe. Also, he might just want to clear a path. He just feel, figures he has to work through those at some point anyway. Right. I mean, it makes it more likely that his Rabble Master gets, to, gets through. It's true. Okay. So path has been clear. That that part worked, and he does. He is left with some value. I mean, he right. He made it. He got to make a token. Yeah. They traded card for card, and Luis is up a token. That's, yeah. That's it's hard to argue with that. Both players have stopped playing land on three. Yeah, Christensen and Salvato. That both has to be better for Salvato. Has to be. One deck has five drops. <laughs> they both do. What, what's what's uh, Salvato? Storm breath. Oh, he's got his own storm breath, of course. They both have four. A lot of red cards in hand for Luis Salvato, all of them. See that he's got Stoke the Flames. How worried is he about that morph? If it's a Mystic, is he? I mean, is he wanting to try to shut the door on that thing? He would like to kill it. I mean, in a lot of a lot of these early turns though are just like, what's the most efficient way to play your hand? Why is that? Why is the morph attack? It's being convoked for Stoke. Gotcha. Yeah, kills it. Did you get another Mystic? I think that one was not. I think it was a... Oh, that one was Ashcar. Yeah, that was a Phoenix. If it's a Mystic, though, the, the plus two mana that Oscar would yeah. get next turn is really nice for Oscar. Exactly. But I think Luis... I mean, it's not bad to get an Ash Cloud. But I mean, really wanted to make sure that he's keeping him pinched on mana. Right. So, I mean, I like that line of play. I do, too. And, and, and you can see what's happening here. I mean, look at Luis Salvato's side of the board. It's gotten quite big. He's now got six creatures. And an Ash Cloud Phoenix for Oster Christensen is going to play defense here. Now, Salvato does not have Radical Mystic, so we know that his morph is an Ash Cloud Phoenix. Right. No jeering instigators or anything? No, no yeah. jeering instigators. There. Finally, a fourth land, though. Both players have found fourth land now. So we're going to get a real fight here. Salvato's going to play Outpost Siege here. He did bring it in. He brought it in. Which, which side is he choosing? <laughs> He's just going to dragon, dragon token? Is that yeah. what happened? He's Dude. choosing dragons. All right, this is really interesting. It looks pretty good here, right? I mean, all these random tokens dying and, and mm -hmm. pinging is a big deal. And now that he's ahead... I mean, I suppose almost any card would look pretty good here. <laughs> like, fair. name me a card that doesn't look, you know, that costs four mana and doesn't look great here, but... Wow, you can't, air can't even block a token, right? It just dies to the one extra damage from the siege? It does trade it with it, yes. Oh, this is really annoying. He can, he can block the morph, and then the morph would kill the Ash Cloud Phoenix when it died. True. Wow. 
Outpost Siege being really annoying here. So he may as well block with the Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah, that seems right. Air eats a token. Phoenix eats the Phoenix. Oscar will get his back. Wait, how did the triggers work here? So when... Active player's triggers load on the stack first, right? So the Siege triggers are under? Or does he have to choose targets when, he, when they trigger? Uh, when they die, they go on. So his will be under, Luis's. And he has to choose the target when he puts them on the stack. So he's not right. going to be able to target this Ash Cloud Phoenix that's coming back face down. Right, because the he trigger's going to target's... go on the stack. Yeah, you're totally right. He will be able to finish off the Air of the Wilds. Right. And, he'll, and, and in any way, he'll be able to, to hit Oscar's face. But yeah, letting them keep the, the Phoenix could be detrimental here. I'm sure he'd rather have just killed it. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, getting a morph here is a pretty big deal. Uh, you know, he's facing down a Ral uh, Goblin Rabble Master there. Having anything that can trade with that is nice. Is this a land? Okay, land number five. So Oscar Christensen at full, full power here with four cards in his hand. And he's got the Storm Breath, but he knows... The storm Breath on defense, though. Can't attack, yeah. And this is going to be... Oh, a oh, separate geez. copy of Goblin Rabble Master spewing out tokens, and he's just going to jam with yeah. everybody. Sure. So he blocks a token with yep. Storm Breath, and yep. he trades Rabble Master. He'll take an extra Takes damage. four, and then there's Five, two pings, six. which are probably going to his face. Yep, putting him down to four down life. To four. Does Christensen have a way to gain life? Because the way no. I see it, he's dead if he doesn't. <laughs> and he doesn't? Yeah. Wow. So we're going to get a game three here. Outpost Siege. That was interesting. We've seen it twice, and it's been good both times. Now, the question I have is if you're behind, right? right. If you find right. yourself behind the eight ball and Christensen's like making haste creatures... Then you have that card in your hand, and it probably looks pretty bad. There, though, it felt like he couldn't lose once he it played was, it. It was the finishing blow in a game where he was already ahead. Yeah. He was ahead, ahead, yeah. ahead. Here's the straw that breaks the camel's back. Yeah. But like, you know, like we said also, I... Does not, like, right, Outpost yeah. Siege was good there, but yeah. lots of things would have been good there because yeah. he was already ahead. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean... Jury's out, but... Jury's still out. It certainly affects the board in a, in a very meaningful way. We've seen that twice. In a weird way, too. In a very weird way, yeah. I mean, all the tokens make it particularly good. I don't know. It's an interesting I card. think they definitely do. Especially there. I mean, you have four or five random goblins and a vigilance cat laying around, and those just all turn into We get to learn about bombs. the timing of uh, yeah. Ash Cloud. Yeah, that was very important. Yeah. Do you want to hear the crazy rules interaction from earlier that I saw? Yeah. What, what happened? So Tamaharo Saito uses Jeering Instigator to mm -hmm. steal his opponent's uh, Jeskai Infiltrator. That's the mm -hmm. one that when it attacks, you like shuffle it in another card, mm -hmm. right? So it's in his opponent's sleeve. And so Saito, of course, he says, I want to take it out of my opponent's sleeve oh, in order yeah. to shuffle them up so that my opponent doesn't know which one is his own Jeskai Infiltrator, right? Yeah. You can't. <gasps> what? The, the, you can't take it out of your opponent's sleeve. In fact, the fact that your opponent's cards, you can never like shuffle them up in a way where your opponent doesn't know where their cards are. It turns out even if it was unsleeved, you're obliged to tell your opponent which of these things you're shuffling is the one that he owns at all times. I did not know that. I didn't either. That was a really weird ruling. But Because you get to keep the infiltrator, right? Like if you can attack with it and get it through? Yeah. Like and it becomes a manifest, it's on your side. Right, but it's... But the whole going back to their turn doesn't... It undoes the instigator. Do, yeah. Like the instigator link is but broken. But they get to know which one it is. Yeah, it's crazy. You can't you can't, tell, you can't hide from them the truth about which of those cards they own. Wow, I did not know that. Yeah, I never even considered that. Yeah, it was weird. I was talking to the head judge about it. He so was, even if you had the same sleeves, you would have to say this one's yours. Correct. Even if they were even if you were unsleeved, you'd have to say right. which one's theirs. So from combo to nonbo. Still Apparently. Good. Still good, though, right? <laughs> if, if you can hit with it. You, you still get it and a 2-2 two -two off the top of your deck, and they don't get it back. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's this one, but it's mine still. So. All right, so Oscar Christensen is going to be on the play here for our final game. Trying to take home yet another trophy to Denmark for 
add that to that country's list of uh, accolades. Luis Salvato, though, he is not going to make it easy. Luis is from Argentina, and uh, he'd like to have a trophy there. Thank you very much. <laughs> Got to figure Oscar is a favorite here just, just from being on the play, right? Being on the play definitely helps. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think the like, matchup favors Luis. Uh huh. So I don't know if Maybe being on the play is enough yeah. to even it up. It's one of those for like neutral field, I'd favor Luis. On the play, though, it might matters. bring it back to pick him. Speaking of Pickham sporting events, we had a big game next weekend. You, you'll be covering the Grand Prix instead of watching our Seahawks? Yes. So well, guys actually, so I was driving they're not the, mutually exclusive. Fair. I was, I was driving. <laughs> we'll see. As I was driving to the event today, mm -hmm. I was sort of driving down the interstate. The Seahawks practice facility is actually like five minutes from here. Mm -hmm. And it's between my house and Wizards' building. So as I'm driving in, I noticed that there are fans on all the overpasses on the interstate. There's like every, every time I went under an overpass, there'd be like 20, 30 fans and half a dozen ba banners hanging down. Unbelievable. Apparently, apparently today was the day the Seahawks are going to be driving to the airport. <laughs> oh, God. There's like literally that 100 Seahawks so awesome. fans. They had to like divide it up all of, the, uh, all of the exits so that they could be cheering on the Seahawks. That is just great. I'm trying to figure out how I can time my breaks. <laughs> at GP San Jose. If it was an East Coast GP, you'd have a shot. Yeah. Well, you have to call the top eight. The players would all get to watch, except for the top eighters. Yep. Hagan had me confused for a while. He told me that the Super Bowl was on the Pro Tour weekend. I was, I was thinking about, like, Pro Tour, but East Coast Pro Tour, though, it would have worked. It was sort of oh, probably worked out in D.C., but Hagan had the weekends wrong. All right, opening hands here for the finals. <laughs> Who's it going to be? Oscar Christensen, Red Green Monsters, Luis Salvato, Red, White, Aggressive. Start things off with some keeps here, gentlemen. How yeah, about that? Is this Oscar thinking about it? Oh, yeah. oh, uh, there it uh, is. There's the hallmark, the Elvish Mystic on turn one. And it lives to turn two. No bolting of the bird, as we say. Uh, yeah, no still, four twos. Still has room, though. Do we have a two drop? Maybe a little air of the wilds here? Oh, no, oh, it's just, just going to attack. attack. <laughs> All right, no, no meaningful damage done yet. Although, I mean, just the tempo of Luis being forced to kill it on turn two is not nothing. Yeah, I mean, he knows he doesn't have anything else to do with two mana, so. Yeah, he's you gonna totally kill it. Kill it. I, yep. that is, I don't care if you have a seeker of the way, you kill the elf. I agree. Elf down. More comes to play tap lands. And nothing from Christensen. Is this going to be a Rabble Master? No. Port Rabble Outburst. Master would have been pretty insane, though. Outburst might even be better Rab if, if Oscar has a Lightning Rabble Master might have died. Right, it could yeah, easily have died. Totally. There's both Wild Slash in from the sideboard and Lightning Strike in the deck. This is a good time for... Okay, that's Zenigo's in from the sideboard. All right. Hello, old friend. You want to fight Token Fight? We'll fight Token Fight. I make two twos, you get one ones. What do you say? Now he's got to leave it back for blocks. And I think that we're going to see it dispatched pretty quickly by Chain of the Rocks. I know Luis has two of those, but he also might have another burn spell or something to get rid of it. And then uh, that will clear the way for the goblins to rumble in. It looks like Chain it is. All right, so a nice sequence there. Yeah. Ultimately, a one for one. I mean, you always feel bummed. It's a four when you mana card for a one mana card, though. But, yeah. I mean, it should sure. be Edge Louise just on mana, except he doesn't seem to have done anything else with this turn. Also, including play another land. Might have a handful of white cards and only one white mana. Could be. He could. He could have a, a lightning strike. Yeah, you could have lightning something. strike up to hit a rabble master. Yeah. Here's Ashcloud Phoenix for Christensen. Doesn't match up particularly well against the one ones on the ground, mm -hmm. though not terrible. I mean, you can just I mean, run through right. them, but he's just going to start attacking. 
I would think. What, yeah. you want to trade for one and come back as a 2-2? Is that I the plan? Mean, probably not. If that was the plan, you would have played it face down rather than take one off Mana Confluence. Yeah, maybe. I mean, this way, even if he has Lightning Strike, you still get a creature. Fair. Yeah, these are the little subtle details that a match like this can turn on. Absolutely. How do you just turn that, like, one, one, one token profit? All right. He pointed at him, and I'm like, is he really saying go? That doesn't make any sense. No, I think but that was, was how many cards are in your hand. Yeah, he was asking how many cards he had in his hand. Okay, in comes the team. Taking it. Hits his land drop. Yep. And he did have a bunch of white cards in his hand. And but there's that Siege again. Yeah, it goes for Outpost Siege. Looks like he has taken Khan, so he's going to be drawing extra cards from the Siege here. So he, he gets Chandra Zero ability every turn. Yes, and he, it looks like Luis does think this is a bit grindier than it appears on the surface, where it's... This is not a game where he's ahead here. either. I mean, this is a more interesting test of the output siege. Right? Yeah, it, he's in the middle, right? Yeah. Yeah, and he's going to have to come up with something great off of the siege because he's facing now two Ash Cloud Phoenix, which are going to kill him in two turns. All right. Siege reveals a Brimaz. Which he is already a had little one depressing, yeah, because he already had one. I mean, he's up the card, right? He can play the one, that one instead of the one from his hand, and then if it gets killed, but that's not where the game is going. This that's, is not no. grindy. This is, I have eight power worth of flyers. Right, and the thing to remember when we're evaluating that Siege is that he effectively took last turn off. Right. Right, like he could have a Brimaz in play right now, mm -hmm. right, that could be attacking and forcing the issue against this Phoenix, but doing nothing for the turn, can you get away with it in oh, standard in this type of matchup? No That's third the question. White mana. He wants to go chain Brimaz this turn is what he wants to do, uh, but he doesn't have a third white. And, and I want to remind you, that Brimaz is not on the battlefield. Right, like it has, that's, has been revealed by the Outpost Siege. Tokens chip away. Yeah, I think you have to chain. He's yeah, just, he's dead in two turns. Exactly. Yeah. That's going to stay hidden there, but remember, Oscar does have a way to get rid of those. Yeah, that thing stays exiled, too. All right. So... Perhaps not the most mana efficient turn for Luis Vado, but he did what he needed to do to keep that clock lowered down, and he's got his opponent with just the one Ash Cloud Phoenix. This is where Oscar wants to play Land Dragon. Has Luis got Stoke up? I think he's got Stoke to Flame in his one, hands. Two, Which makes this turn three, a lot more four. mana efficient. Yes, you're totally right, and he, and he does have four. This is a big turn for Christensen. He needs to do something impressive. Yeah, you're kind of at that point where if you can do two things a turn and your opponent can't, you start pulling ahead of him. Right. Here's Phoenix, and it's going to get stoked. Okay. And, you know, Luis can just throw around these burn spells like this because he figures, well, I'm just going to recruit yeah, this the way back again off of the siege. So Great point. I like how he's playing it. Once you have that siege down, just kill everything. Yeah. If you're drawing two cards a turn, you're going to get ahead. <laughs> Does he have Chandra, too? Or maybe that was a Sarkon. Yeah, I think it was a Sarkon. All right, there's Chandra. Mm -hmm. Pick off a goblin. Yep. Okay, let's see what the siege hits. These are big reveals. Mountain? Which he plays during play. his upkeep. <laughs> he put it on top of the siege. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> I was just teasing him anyway. So he's Still got only two white, so Brimaz would be his only white Sarkon card. Sarkon times two in hand. And Brimaz. And then the Brimaz. So only gets to do one thing. It's the mm. most impactful thing. I mean, the one thing he could do is, Sarkon is just kills Chandra. kill Chandra. Yeah, Yeah, I like play Sarkon and then send everybody at Chandra. Yeah. Yeah, Chandra The Morphle, of course, pick off a goblin, but... Still five. So in this slugfest that was, you know, even to slightly in Oscar's favor when the siege came down, Luis has been able to stabilize and now pull ahead, mm -hmm. and he's of course still going to generate advantage from the siege every tur every turn as well. S 
still no only, fifth mana, by the way. I was going to say, I mean, part of the value of the siege was finding a land there. Mm -hmm. Oscar would love to be, have a free land. I wonder if Oscar brought in his uh, back the to nature. There's, there's a storm breath. A little painful storm breath, but. He gets to kill Sarkon here. I think so, yeah. And just leave his opponent with the goblin. That seems fine. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think there's a replacement Sarkon for Luis Salvato, which gets to kill Stormbreath. This is just haymakers back and forth. Mm-hmm. Where's Seeker the card for the, the way. siege? That's Seeker a, of the way. That's a siege card? Yep. Okay. Can he Sarkon and Seeker? He's a mana short. He's only got six in play. Yes, he only has six. So once again, he's just going to not play the siege card. Crazy. I mean, you do what you got to do, obviously. Right. That Seeker's not in play, right? That's the Siege card, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Awkward, but like you said, you do what you got to do. So he's missed out on a Seeker. I, I mean, and his game minutes. plan is working, right? His yes. game plan of just, I'll kill all your stuffs. Yep. I'm eventually going to grind you out with card advantage. Yeah. I mean, he's hoping to hit those removal spells instead of the threats, but... As it turns out, he's had the removal spells in hand. Yeah, and Luis left his goblin back, planning to jump block that Ashcock Phoenix, so it totally. can't kill Sarkin. Now, Oscar, if he has six mana, no, that's, that land into the battlefield tapped. He mm -hmm. could have flipped up the Phoenix and gotten that job done, but it's not going to happen the way that it went here. And lightning so strike to lightning finish off Sarkon. So, but, but again, mm -hmm. this is not the fight that Oscar wants to be fighting here. True damage for the morph. Right? I mean, he's one for one with Luis or even getting two for one occasionally while Luis just generates advantage. And now. Well, what else is he going to do? Yeah, yeah, no. I'm just saying, like, th this is, uh, I'm speaking to the Siege. It, it's looking good here. I mean, credit to Oscar. He's maneuvered it so that he's ahead on board. Mm hmm. That, that was but when he passed the turn. <laughs> credit to Luis. The Outpost Siege is just keeps supplying him with threats. He's actually just trying to decide right now. If he wants to start picking these things off, he's got lightning strikes, but he's also got that brim ass still right. in his hand. Yeah. And he's just going to try to turn the tide back in his favor with Two double Rabble Masters. Rabble Masters. Cute. Christensen falls down to six. This is like total slow. It's just two mana confluences have not helped. Luis Salvato. That is getting close. Both the mana confluences in his list. He only plays two. Ah. But has Dan yeah, drawing both of them has hurt. Yeah, if he wants to tap both of them now, he opens himself up to getting stoked right out of here and he's got other problems. Hey, make that seven. Only one card left. It's Barrage of Boulders. Hmm. He's going to wait a turn. And there's an Ash Cloud Phoenix off of the uh, Siege, so he can cast that thing. Does he have double Lightning Strike in hand or one? I think he just has one now. Lightning Strike on Morph. Weird. He can flip it. Turn it into a phoenix and then get it back. It would cost him four life to do I'm that. I'm aware. <laughs> Saves him one from the token he'll get to block or the rabble master he'll get to block. Yes. Okay, he, he can he actually the get the mystic a to get the extra here. mana. So there's three mana. Four, five, six, and he can leave the mystic up to try to block the other yeah. rattle claw. Makes so sense. this is close. This is very, very close. I mean, Oscar's playing this as well as he can. I'm impressed with the way he's playing. I given, like how given he's the draw. Yeah. Block, block the two block, rabble go masters, to one. go to one. <laughs> Ash Cloud Phoenix. Lethal, 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 lethal. And is this going to do it? Out no. Siege. Well, so he can barrage and it. Kind of kills everything, but it the wasn't Ashcloud enough. Comes back. The Ash Cloud comes back, and yeah. then the Ash Cloud flips for It Lisa. flips exactly, so Luis, Luis Salvato. Salvato is our winner. All the way from Argentina, made it into the top eight in the eighth spot, and comes through to beat Oscar Christensen and become our Super Sunday Series champion.
congratulations to Luis Salvato playing Red White Aggro. He gets right by Red Green Monsters. He also had to beat Black Green Constellation. And he had to beat Ubs on Aggro as well to make it to the finals. Yeah, I really enjoyed Oscar Christensen's Yasovas yes. on the way to the final, but it was, it was the Outpost Siege that won it. It was. It was absolutely Fate Reforged. Totally. Outpost yeah. Siege. The game before it won it as well, though, as we noted, there's a lot of cards that would do it there. Yeah. But on that game, he was a little behind when he played it. Yeah. And then he just ground. Yeah. Grind, 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 and all of a sudden he generated enough advantage to win it. Yeah, good so game. So congratulations to him and to everybody else who A, made it here, and B, made it to the top eight. It was a really fun weekend. We're actually going to get a chance to have a, a quick chat with Luis Salvato. Uh, Nate Price is going to wrangle him up and uh, get some thoughts from him. You can see how excited Luis was. Congratulations oh, yeah. to him. He's won $6,000 for the victory. And it looks like they're about ready to chat. All right. Not they're not quite ready yet. Looks like they're just having a little, little friendly chit chat before we send it down there. But that's a big smile on Luis Salvato, and why not? It's also a big trophy. Yeah. <laughs> that thing seems sweet. All right, let's send it, send it down to Nate, who's standing right there with Luis. All right. Welcome back, guys. Um, I'm Nate Price, and I'm here with your Super Sunday Series Championship champion Luis yeah. Salvato how's it going <laughs> yes how do you feel right now so happy so happy awesome only thing the next year I'll be back again is football. perfect right yeah, yeah. I know as a Latin American player it can be difficult to get the opportunities to travel really yeah, far like this yeah. and now you are so the champion hard. of a tournament you have an yeah. opportunity to come back again yes. it's a super super awesome and that last match was very difficult. Down so, game one, yeah. behind the Mulligan, other two games. Mulligan six in the second. Yeah. yeah. Feels good to come back from the behind and yeah. actually take things down. Yeah. I play against Oscar three times. Yeah. Three times in sealed draft, in draft, and now in standard. Final record? Two one. Two yeah. one. Yeah. The come one. Back again. The one that matters. Yeah. He, he won me the first match. Took the I'm next. So happy. Perfect. Yeah. Anything you want to send back to all the people back at home? Yeah, thank you so much to all my team, MTC Keep. Uh, thank you very much to Jorge from Chile, mm -hmm. who, who pays all of this. And all my friends and family, so happy. Beautiful. Magic layer. All yes. right. Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, Luis Salvato, your champion of the Magic the Gathering Sunday Super Series Championship. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nate, and congratulations once again to Luis Salvato, our champion. Great weekend, Randy. Oh, this was fun. Lots of fun, right? Absolutely. Yeah, this is one of the more fun events that we have on the, on the calendar. We get to kick back a little bit. You know, we do some, some wacky formats and have a good time here at Watsi. But, alas, it is time for us to take off. I wanted to take a minute to thank everybody that helped make the show possible. Uh, Alan Hockman from Pastimes. I saw Steve Port mm -hmm. also helping. All of the wizard staff, judges, everybody here that helps make this whole thing go. And, of course, the players... And you, the viewers, thanks for hanging out. For Randy Bueller, for Nate Price, for Rashad, I'm Marshall Sutcliffe. We'll see you guys next weekend from San Jose.